Welcome to Electron Online, and now we have an example here that's a little bit different from the norm. Here you can see that we have f of x equals x divided by x squared plus 2, and again we're trying to find the maximum values, and also try to find where the function is increasing and decreasing, which gives us an idea of what the function will look like. All right, so what we want to do here is first take the derivative, of course, because remember where the values, where the function, um, I should say, the max and the min values can be found where the slope is equal to zero. So we take the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, and we'll find the points where the slope is zero. Okay, f prime of x. Here we have to use the quotient rule, so we have the denominator, x squared plus two, times the derivative of the numerator, which would be one, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, which would be 2x, all divided by the denominator squared, x squared plus 2. We probably want to simplify that a little bit. So this gives us, this is equal to x squared plus 2 minus 2x squared, all divided by, oop, I forget my denominator squared, can do that. So denominator x squared plus 2 quantity squared. And finally, I simplify that a little bit more, and we get minus x squared plus 2 divided by the quantity x squared plus 2 quantity squared. So that's our derivative, f prime of x. So now we're going to set that derivative equal to 0. So set f prime of x equal to 0. And remember, if we have a fraction set equal to 0, that means the numerator should equal 0, right? If the whole fraction equals 0, that means the numerator equals 0. So it's sufficient to say 0 equals minus x squared plus 2. Solving that for x, we get x squared equals 2, or x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. So those are two possible values for x where the slope is going to be 0, which means there we're going to find a max or a min value. All right, what we need to do now is find, of course, the corresponding y value so we can actually graph those two points. So we're going to plug these values back in the original function to see what the corresponding y values are. So first we have f of x equal to positive square root of 2, which is equal to square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 quantity square plus 2. Notice that the square root of 2 squared is 2 plus 2 is 4, so this becomes the square root of 2 divided by 4, which is a number a little bit less than 1 half. Plugging in the other possible value, which is the negative square root of 2, so f, um, f of x equals negative the square root of 2, that is equal to negative the square root of 2 divided by negative the square root of 2 quantity square plus 2. So we get the exact same value except with a negative on top instead of a positive value, so minus the square root of 2 over 4. So now we have the two points where the slope will be 0. So let's graph those. Here's our x-axis. So when x equals the square root of 2, which is about 1.4, y will be a little bit less than 1 half. So this is 1, this is 2, 1.4 is about here, a little bit less than a half. So right there, that's our first point. And there the slope is 0, so that would be the point square root of 2 comma square root of 2 over 4. So that's our first critical point where the slope will be 0. The second point will be when x equals negative the square root of 2, so this is minus 1 minus 2, so right about here, and it'll be a value of minus square root of 2 over 4, so it's a little bit smaller than a negative 1 half, so right about there, and so the slope there will be 0 as well. So those are the two critical points. Those will be max and, and or minimum values. Now we need to know what the function does to the left, in between, and to the right of those two critical points. So let's try some test points. And again, we plug those test points in the derivative to see what the slope is in those regions. Because if the slope is positive, that means the function is increasing. If the slope is negative, that means the, the function is decreasing. So let's try that. So here we have our derivative. Now we have to plug those two values, those two test values, or three test values. Let's start with the easy one. Let's call x equals 0, the region in between. So f prime when x, oop, when x is equal to 0 is equal to, when we plug in zeros for x, we'll get 0 plus 2 divided by 0 plus 2 squared. That's 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. 1 half is still bigger than 1, I mean bigger than 0, and um, that means it's positive, right? So it's positive. If the slope is positive, 
that means the function is increasing. So between these two values, the function is increasing, so it looks something like that. All right, so now we're getting a feel of what that will look like. Now let's try a point to the right. How about x equals 2? So f prime of x equals 2, what will that give us? Well, where's our derivative right here? It's right here, so for every x we're going to plug in a 2. So it'll be minus 2 squared plus 2 divided by 2 squared plus 2 squared. Again, the real value doesn't matter. In the numerator, notice the denominator will always be positive. Here it's minus 4 plus 2. That's the negative value. We know this is negative. Negative means negative slope, which means the function is decreasing. So to the right, the function is decreasing like this. How about when x equals negative 2? Let's plug this point in right here. And since I'm out of room, I'll put it over there. So f prime prime when x equals negative 2. All right, let's plug those in. So we have minus negative 2 squared plus 2 divided by negative 2 quantity squared plus 2 quantity squared. Notice the denominator will always be positive. And the numerator, this will be 4 Put a minus sign in front of it, that's negative 4 plus 2, so this will be a negative value again. We plug in the number negative 2, we get a negative value, means the slope there is negative, which means the function there is decreasing. Negative slope means it looks kind of like this. All right, so now we have a pretty good idea what this function looks like. It looks like this. Now, will the function continue to go like that and like this, or what will happen? Well, we have to use our knowledge of algebra just a little bit if we come back over here to the original function notice what happened to the value of the function x becomes very large we have an x divided by x squared when x is a hundred that's a hundred divided by ten thousand when x is a million that's a hundred divided by a trillion the number gets smaller and smaller and smaller but never gets to be bigger than zero so in other words or smaller than zero so in other words it uh, it asymptotically reaches the x-axis, so instead of coming up this way and coming up down that way, it actually asymptotically reaches the axis this way, reaches the axis this way, and in between, the two points are connected like that, which means that over here we have an absolute minimum, that's the lowest point on the graph, so that's an absolute minimum, and over there we have an absolute maximum because that's the highest point of the graph and now we realize the function does not do that it kind of smooths out and, and asymptotically reaches the x-axis at both ends of the function and that's how we do that